Hello everyone. Hope you're having a great day out there. I think fall really is here now. Uh, the leaves are falling and rather turning and now falling. Uh, it's really a beautiful fall day out there. Uh, I was thinking about yesterday. It was kind of rainy and overcast and you know it really was a fall day too but uh, today's beautiful. But we're going to dig back into this uh, devotional hashtag wisdom uh, from the YouVersion app and Bible.com. Uh, we're, we're going to chapter 23 today. We're going to continue on in the sayings uh, that we started yesterday. Uh, but the title of today's is, You Are What You Eat. Uh, kind of interesting. Uh, it'll come up several times as we go through uh, the chapter today. But uh, it says, You Are What You Eat. This saying isn't in the book of Proverbs, but I think it could be. Today's chapter focuses a lot on the direct correlation between what we consume and the quality of our lives. The modern day proverb of you are what you eat is a way to challenge us to rethink what we put in our body and question if it's really the healthiest decision we can make. Uh, it's That's so true. We need to be careful what we eat because it does uh, affect us. Uh, you know, something I've learned in the last couple of years, It's it's been almost exactly two years ago that I began my journey of weight loss. And uh, continues today, and we just need to be careful. We need to make healthy decisions. That's one of the things they taught me. Uh, you know, that was so important that you make healthy decisions. You choose uh, what's ne not necessarily. I mean, you don't always have to choose what's best, but you choose what's better. And I, I think that's an important uh, decision. I mean, you know, you you don't just totally eliminate certain things. You know, you don't have to totally get rid of sweets and those kinds of things, but you can. Uh, if you choose what's better, you'll you'll be better off, and uh, uh, kind of kind of that way of, of it's a whole way of thinking. Are we choosing what's better? What God has is what's best, and we go we go after that. We want what what He wants. Um, well, let's get back to to this way before anyone said you are what you eat. Proverbs twenty three observe that you that we are what we surround our lives with. Uh, what we put around us. Now, before we go on, I, they say, I, want, I thought this was interesting. I want to remind you that Proverbs focuses much more on describing the life God wants for us than for prescribing exactly how to attain that life. Uh, Proverbs gives us a vision for the path that God has for us, but it doesn't give us the specific step-by-step -step instruction for our life. As we have said before, Proverbs are principles to guide our lives and not promises that determine the outcome of our lives. Uh, and, and that's an important distinction to make. And I, There are promises that are true, but we need to fully understand the principles behind them. I think that's true throughout Scripture. Uh, there are specific promises, specific things we're to do and not do. But there's also principles that we need to live by. And because certain things are either not mentioned in, in God's Word or, uh, you know, we just kind of have to take it all into consideration and... and uh, it's part of why we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We, we, we find the path forward. And there are things that are true, things that are, are you know, rock solid, foundational kinds of things. But then there are principles too. And we need to know the difference between the two and let the Lord lead us in, in that. Uh, well, let's get back to the devotional. The problem with taking Proverbs as promises and not principles is that sometimes it makes it impossible for us to understand the rest of the Bible. Take, for example, Proverbs 23, 20 to 21, a verse we're going to look at today. It says, Do not join those who drink too, uh, drink too much wine or gorge themselves on meat, for drunkards and gluttons become poor and drowsiness clothes them in rags. That proverb is an excellent principle to live by, but what do we do when we get to the stories of Jesus? When he uh, says in Matthew eleven nineteen, the Son of Man, Jesus, came eating and drinking, and they say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is proved right by her deeds. In other words, Jesus was spending time with gluttons and drunkards, which Proverbs tells us we shouldn't do. Uh, so, was, so the question is asked here, was Jesus disobeying Proverbs 23, 20, 21? If Proverbs are promises, then yes, he was disobeying. However, if Proverbs 23, 20, 21 is a principle about what we surround our lives with, then he wasn't dis disobeying anything. In fact, the way Jesus followed this principle was that he spent a tremendous amount of time saturating himself in, in time with God the Father. In other words, he was so close to the Lord. He was so 
you know, he, he and the father, you know, he spent that time in prayer and, and, uh, you know, it, it was, he, he, well, it says here, it was because of how he wisely surrounded himself with God, the father, that he was able to be light and wisdom for those who needed it most desperately. If we want to live like Jesus, then we need to listen to the advice of Proverbs 23 and be saturated in the things God, of God so that we can embody that wisdom for the world around us. Are you, as you read today, ask yourself, what am I surrounding myself with and what do I need to do to saturate myself more with the things of God? Uh, I like that. You know, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, how are we carrying out these principles? How are we living them the best we can to, to find God's wisdom? Well, let's jump in. Uh, Proverbs 23, it starts with saying uh, seven. It says, when you sit to dine with a ruler, note well what is before you and put a knife to your throat. If you are given to gluttony, do not crave his delicacies for that food is deceptive. Uh, again, that's a good a good principle for us to, to follow because it's, you know, if, if you, you need to be very careful whenever you're faced with a, a table full of, uh, of uh, delicacies, you, you need to be careful that you control yourself. And that's what I was talking about with putting a knife to your throat. In other words, just control how much you're eating and how, how you're eating it. It's a good, good wisdom for us to live by. Saying eight, do not wear yourself out to get rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches and they are gone, for they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. Uh, you know, be careful about your desire to be to be rich with earthly things. Uh, do not trust your own cleverness. Just just be aware of that. It's a principle to follow. Saying nine, do not eat the food of a begrudging host. Do not crave his delicacies, for he is the kind of person who's always thinking about the cost. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. You will vomit up the little you have eaten and will have wasted your compliments. Uh, again, be careful who you're surrounding yourself with. You, you don't want to go to someone that, you know, begrudging host. Uh, you, you know, you're better off with someone who, uh, who, who has your best at heart. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily mean about food either. It can be about anything. So, uh, just who are you surrounding yourself with? Saying 10, do not speak to fools, for they will scorn your prudent words. Uh, it's a short saying there. But, uh, uh, just be careful. In other words, it's not that you don't ever speak to someone that's a fool, that you don't speak truth even, that you don't, you know. Um, but but just understand, the principle is just understand that they they may scorn your prudent words. Uh, they may not listen to you when, when you speak to them. And it's okay, as long as you're speaking truth. Uh, with wisdom saying 11 do not move an ancient boundary stone or encroach on the fields of the fatherless for their defender is strong he will take up their case against you again that boundary stone came up comes up again and uh, again just be 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 careful who you're surrounding yourself with saying 12 apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of, of knowledge uh, I think this is this probably is more of a of a promise than a. I mean, it's a principle too, but uh, it, it's kind of both. If you apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge, God will lead you in, in the path that you need to go, and you will be the kind of person that He wants you to be. Again, applying your heart, not just your mind, but but just just letting it work its way through through who you are. Uh, Apply your heart to instruction, your ears to words of knowledge. Uh, we all need to do that. Saying 13, do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish them with the rod, they will not die. Punish them with the rod and save them from death. Uh, <laughs> uh, again, good visual, visual uh, aid there. If you punish them with the rod, they will not die. Uh, I, you know, I wonder how many kids, you know, I probably when I was a kid and, and got punished, uh, in that way, I, I thought I was going to die, or I tried to say I was going to die, or or whatever. Uh, we'll let my parents comment on that. But but anyway, you, it doesn't mean you don't discipline because they put on make a scene and all that. Do not withhold discipline from a child uh, because it saves them from death. It says punish them with a rod and save them from death. Uh, you know, it's it's a, uh, you know, a reality. If you don't punish, you, you might be causing more damage than if you do. Saying 14, my son, if your heart is wise, then my heart will be glad indeed. My inmost being will rejoice when your lips speak what is right. Uh, what a blessing it is. Uh, you know, we're never having a conversation with, with any of my three girls. And, you know, they say something. I know that they've picked up uh, 
Uh, I know some of my sermons here lately, I know uh, all three girls have made comments uh, related to those sermons and how they got it, they understood it, and, and were really applying it to their life, and it, and it made my heart glad uh, to hear that. Saying 15, do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is surely a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. Uh, do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. Always look to the Lord, always looking to who he is. And again, what are you surrounding yourself with? Is it the things of God? Is it his wisdom? Uh, or is it your own wisdom? Is it your own, the things of this earth, this the worldly pleasures that you want to just, just, you know, you want to get and got to go after because you envy, envy those that have them. Uh, there's hope for you. <laughs> your hope will not be cut off if you're zealous for, uh, for the fear of the Lord, for, for worshiping him, for following him. Saying 16, listen, my son, and be wise and set your heart on the right path. Do not join those who drink too much wine or gorge themselves on meat. Here's our key verse today. For drunkards and gluttons become poor and drowsiness uh, clothes them in rags. Uh, again, who are you surrounding yourself with? Uh, what are you surrounding yourself with? You know, it, it's okay to reach out to those that, you know, might be taking part in those things, but make sure you're surrounded closer by the presence of the Lord and his wisdom. And then, then you're free to, to, you know, I kind of think of it in a way that we're, we're thinking about, trying to think about wisdom in these days. You know, we, we're surrounded, as I've said many times lately, that we're surrounded by so many different voices trying to get our attention, trying to pull us towards them. And, and the key is is being wise in the words of God, in the, the way of, of the Lord, and, and allowing us then to filter all those other voices that are coming at us through, through his wisdom, through his word. Uh, such an important thing in these days. What are we surrounding ourselves with? Saying 17, listen to your father who gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. But the truth, and do not sell it, wisdom, instruction, and insight as well. The father of a righteous child has great joy. A man who fathers a wise son rejoices in him. May your father and mother rejoice, and may she who gave you birth be joyful. Uh, I'm thankful for, for my parents who let me know. I, I got a text. I didn't see it until you, until today, but I got a text from my dad on Sunday saying how much he appreciated my sermon. And, and that meant so much to me, you know, when he encourages me that way. I know he does it so often. Both of my parents are so good to tell me how much how much they love me and are proud of me. And, uh, you know, I, I think of it just, just you know, I'm, I'm just trying to be, you know, I, uh, uh, their their son the best I can be and, and more than that being a child of God and living how he wants me to live and I, I think that goes along with what what it's saying saying here listen to your, your father uh, you know, do not despise your mother in other words just honor them and I, I try to do that but I'm, I'm so thankful for them saying 18 my son give me your heart let your eyes delight in my ways for an adulterous woman is a deep pit and a wayward wife is a narrow well like a bandit, she lies in wait and multiply, multiplies the unfaithful among men. Again, be careful who you're surrounding yourself with. Not an adulterous woman, a wayward wife. Uh, just be careful. Saying 19, who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has needless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Those who linger over wine, who go to sample bowls of mixed wine. Do not gaze at wine when it, it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Your eyes will see strange sights and your mind will imagine confusing things. You will be like one sleeping on the high seas, lying on top of the rigging. They hit me, you will say, but I'm not hurt. They beat me, but I don't feel it. When will I wake up so I can find another another drink? Uh, I think as I'm reading that, I think he, evidently he's experienced that kind of thing. And, and that's why he's saying, don't do it. Um, you know, be careful what kind of life you're living and, uh, again, who you're surrounding your, yourself with or what you're surrounding yourself with. Uh, again, some pretty, pretty vivid imagery there. In the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a vi viper or, you know, you, you're like one sleeping on the high seas lying on top of the rigging. Uh, not, not the way God intends for us to live, not what he wants us to put in our bodies. Uh, that kind of goes along with some of the other things that said here on food and that kind of thing. We need to be careful with what and, uh, you know, again, who we're surrounding ourselves with so we can be who he wants us to be.
Well, let's, uh, let's pray together as we wrap up today. Lord, thank you again for this word, uh, your word that uh, you speak to us, hoping that we will uh, uh, engage with it and uh, get it into our hearts and into our lives so that it can change us, so that can, we can become who you want us to be. There's such incredible wisdom here, some of it pr very practical and, and right on point and, and uh, into how we're living and, and the things, the decisions we make every day. And Lord, just help us to, to learn from it and um, to be your people, to be who you want us to be. I, I say that a lot. I, I think it's so true. Our world needs Christians to be Christian right now. They need us to stand up and, and be who you want us to be. And, and if Christians all across our nation, really all across the world, if we were to be who you want us to be, uh, our world would be such a better place. Uh, we would be so much closer to to peace and joy and love and and every good thing that you you want for us you desire for your children to be lord help us in these days uh, especially in these days of division with with so much uh, uh, racially going on and and so much politically and dealing with the coronavirus lord we just need your presence we need your leading your guiding uh, help us, Lord, in these days. Be with all the doctors and nurses and those looking into to an intervention in, with this disease. Lord, give wisdom to all those involved. Uh, Lord, we just just lift up this situation to you. You, it, It's a big deal, but you are bigger yet, and we just look to you for all that we need in these days. Thank you, Lord. Be with us today. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for watching again today, and we'll uh, we'll try to be back tomorrow with uh, chapter 24 of, uh, of this great book of Proverbs. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.